Good evening. Carrie and I are glad to be with you on this Tuesday evening. We um, are here in the sanctuary together, and we're always glad for you to come drop by and be with us for a while as we think about God and as we transition into our evening hour. We are going to think a little bit about something that I hope then you think a whole lot about, and maybe it will um, be a part of what you uh, work on uh, later in the evening as you have your prayer time and think about um, all that God has done for you. This is actually tonight a passage from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, a church that he loved very much, and uh, words that I always love to hear. I love, I think Philippians is probably my favorite um, book of the Bible, but its wisdom is comes to us in such a way that I think it's very hearable. Uh, at least it's very applicable if we choose to make it so. But these are words that are good for us in this day and age during this time of as we get closer and closer to the election of a new president of the United States, uh, as we get uh, more and more, at least in the River Valley, um, aware of COVID and how many people around us have COVID, uh, all of those things that we're struggling with now, even as we are still continuing uh, to be in the beginning of a new school year, we think, well, kids have been in school now for a long time and they haven't. This is all still very new and still very fresh, and not just kids growing up, but kids in college and uh, in all sorts of situations. So I want us to hear this tonight in the hope and belief that it will help us as we seek to do God's will in our life. So if you will hear these words from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi, it's from the second chapter, and we'll be looking at verses 3 through 5. Listen for the word of God. When you do things, do not let selfishness or pride be your guide. Instead, be humble and give more honor to others than to yourselves. Do not be interested only in your own life, but be interested in the lives of others. In your lives, you must think and act like Christ Jesus. Let's hear that last word one more time. In your lives, you must think and act like Christ Jesus. This is a good word for us tonight. Do you ever ask yourself if you're a selfish person? Is that a bad thing for me? It's only us here together. Is that a bad thing for me to even bring up? To ask if you ever think about being selfish? I think about when I do things, I think about all the time, is this something that's selfish? Or is it something that truly needs to be done? When I have prayer time, uh, and I am interceding for people, uh, I even ask myself that then. Am I praying selfishly for this person because I want them to have what they want so much? Or am I praying in actual earnestness in need as they stand in need? Uh, you may have to think about that a little bit. But I am... Um, a good pleader on others' behalf when I uh, go to God in prayer. And I say to God frequently, and I know that God really appreciates this, but it's like, God, please see their need. I mean, I can even see their need. Please, I know you are wise and wonderful and you know all things. And maybe I have understood this wrong, but they have a need. Please see the need. Um, and I ask myself a lot of times, you know, it's sort of like when we say, is there some way that I could have that new Lexus and, and still make it work within my budget and still be tithing to the church and still uh, be paying for my children's education and all those kinds of things? Or would something else have to go? Because really, I, I like the way I live my life. I don't really want anything to go. But how could I work that Lexus payment into my uh, own budget? So there are different ways that we're selfish, and we can be selfish even in our prayers. We ask ourselves, as Paul suggests to us tonight, we ask ourselves uh, how often we put others first. He talks about it in a way that speaks to most of us in our hearts. <laughs> Maybe it hits some of us in our face, but, you know, here it is from Paul anyway. Uh, and that is the ability for humility. Uh, 
some of us don't have the ability for humility. We just have to kind of work that out. And for some of us, that is a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of prayer. It's a lot of practice. Asking Christ uh, to rework your heart, uh, recommitting yourselves to Christ so that you will learn again if you haven't learned it before. Maybe you've learned it and dropped it, but that you will learn again to put others first, to not put yourself above someone else. One of the greatest things that I know of that we can do and it's not just me that knows this, so I'm not saying that. But we know that one of the greatest things that we can do is to help those who are in need. And when we help other people, truthfully, we don't always really know who's in need and who isn't in need. That's God's call. We're not called to say, do you really deserve this help? We're not judges. We're not called to be judges. We're called to be humble. We're called to put others first. We're called, above all, as in the last verse, to act like Christ Jesus. That's a tall order, and that's hard. Because there are times when we uh, are called to uh, put others first that we think, you know, this is just hard for me. This is just hard for me to put someone above myself when I can think of so many things that I think they've done wrong. That doesn't make us sound very good. We're, we're never honest about that on the outside. Let's be real. We're never honest about that. We don't say those kinds of things. But that's part of what gets in our way of humility. It's part of what gets in our way of putting others first. The good thing for us is that the scripture doesn't really give us a choice. It's not a choice about whether or not I want to be humble. I'm supposed to be humble. It's not really a choice about putting someone else first. I'm supposed to put someone else first. All of those kinds of things that we think when we get to a certain age in life, we might not have said this exactly, but we get to this place where we think, I thought when I was this age, I wouldn't have to be doing all that stuff. And yet we find out at this age that we need to be the ones who are setting the example. We need to be the ones who can actually model what a life of putting Christ first is all about. What a life of humility, lived well, is all about. What a sense of peace we have when we follow Christ's example and not the example of the world. I know that you've thought of all of these things before, but I want to call your attention to them again. The scripture clearly says, do not be selfish. And we think about that, as I said, even in our prayers. How is it that we pray? If we're leaders, how is it that we make decisions? Is it what's best for the leader and what's going to make the leader look the best? Or is it what's best for the people that we serve? And most all of us, even if we're in corporations, we have people, and I don't just mean our higher-ups, I mean people to account to, that we are accountable to every day. Whether or not they like a product, or whether or not we serve well, whether it's through like a hospital, or through a church, or through some other nonprofit, it can be for, for something that makes money, something that is nonprofit. It's all going to basically come down to serving other people and how they feel they've been served. That's really what life is about. We've just put a, a different spin on it than what Christ has. Christ is very clear. Christ is very plain. And Paul teaching Christ is also very clear and very plain. And so that's what I'll leave you with tonight for you to think about and pray about and maybe do a little self-examination about whether or not you really do feel that you're selfish or you really wonder if maybe tonight's the night that you need to recommit yourself to Christ who humbled himself to die on the cross for us when he didn't have to do that. But he saved a whole world generation after generation after generation. One small act for us 
Maybe we won't be small, maybe we won't be saving many generations, but we might be saving someone. You just never know. That's why we try more and more and more to be like Christ, who saved us all. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.